following work by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism uh, in 2018, what we also see is that the Office for National Statistics now also provides estimates of the number of people who have died whilst experiencing homelessness. And the most recent statistics suggest that this number was about 500 and, and 90, 600, somewhere around there. And that that was a 24% increase on the 2013 figure, which is the earliest year that we have data for. So this also suggests that people well set experiencing homelessness are increasingly more likely to suffer ill health or, or in the worst cases, death. I've been to a lot of funerals, unfortunately, and it's, it's awful, especially when, you know, the circumstances of their death are so preventable. I think that's the worst part of it, is that actually if, um, you know, if they'd been given more support um, by the system in general, you know, I don't think it's any individual's person. I think there's a lot of very good people working within the system. I'm very privileged to have worked with, worked alongside lots of professionals who really, really care and really want to make a difference. But the system is not the easiest thing to work within. And there's only a certain amount of resources that we're given. And so with those, it feels like some people have slipped through the net sometimes. And, you know, unfortunately, Sometimes they don't even have family around them. You know, some, I know there's been funerals that I've gone to where it's been mostly the support workers of that person who have been there. In thinking about the causes of death of people experiencing homelessness, different causes have been suggested. So the Office for National Statistics suggests that the three main causes are related to drug poisoning, alcohol-related issues and suicide. Um, it's horrific and it's heartbreaking because as I said it is preventable there is no need for someone to die in the cold on the street by themselves. A study by University College London has actually suggested that up to a third of those deaths are to do with preventable illness and diseases so things such as cancer, uh, things such as respiratory issues or things such as TB which actually could be treated if people had the correct support in place. But in terms of changes to legislation in support of people who might be experiencing difficulties or homelessness, actually what we see is that the government's been quite slow to respond to this, or where they've spoken about changes, so changes to things such as private rental sector agreements. These are, are not looking like they're going to happen perhaps in the next few years it's going to happen over a much longer period of time. And that's not particularly helpful for people who are experiencing housing or homelessness issues at the moment. A lot of the support is left to charities. There's a lot of uh, charities that have been set up that are hostels and things like that. So in Milton Keynes, we have the Winter Night Shelter, which runs from the beginning of November to the beginning of April. And I know that in other places, the uh, you know it's a real short stay thing for people, and it's kind of like you're given a you're given a hostel place for a couple of weeks or four weeks or whatever it is, and then you're asked to leave and you're back out on the streets again. And actually, there's all you've had really is a bed for four weeks. But in Milton Keynes, the way that it has been set up, and it has been set up in in a few other areas in a similar way, is that the uh, the shelter actually has a housing officer. They house around 40 people permanently. The fact that it works well in some areas and not in others means that it does need to be actually a policy and it needs to be um, in some ways regulated nationally by the government because it shouldn't necessarily fall to whoever happens to be in the area that wants to do something. Obviously you can, you can tap into that and you can tap into the charity sector, but I feel like there needs to be some kind of uniform thing that is in that is a supportive thing for homeless people so in terms of what the what could be done better in you know in a government in a government sense is that in Milton Keynes I'm going to talk a little bit about the housing first model that has um, that's been put in place uh, since 2019 so what housing first said and what the study found was that if you if you take this rough sleeping person and you place them into accommodation not just 
plop them by themselves into an unfurnished flat with no support, but you give them a support worker and that support worker helps them to set up their gas and their electric, which they might not have had to do for a decade if they've been rough sleeping for a long period of time. Um, helps them to get registered with a GP. Uh, helps them set up a bank account if they've not got one. Helps them get registered with drug and alcohol services. Takes them to all their appointments and um, you know provides that really intensive support. And what was found in Milton Keynes was on day one, I believe they housed 40 people and they ended up having to get more stock. Um, but from those people that got housed, I believe only one or two went back onto the streets. Whereas normally, if you, um, if you kind of just take a person who's been rough sleeping for a long period of time and give them accommodation with no support, that person doesn't have good odds of maintaining that tenancy. But actually, with, with this extra support and this coordinated support, because it was kind of coordinated by the support worker um, for them to go to all these different services, it really worked. So I believe and I really hope that it's going to get rolled out nationally. I hope it's going to get a lot more funding. I hope that it grows in Milton Keynes. It's actually cheaper to get a house, get a support worker, put the homeless person there and give them that support than it is to leave someone homeless long term. Because when someone's homeless long term, you end up with um, with lots of different you know crimes being committed. So. It really does make sense from a financial point of view, even if you just want to go, you know, want to look at it from that angle. But actually from a human angle, um, you know, just to be able to take someone who needs that support and give them that support and watch them flourish is a really beautiful thing. So that's what I hope to see in the coming years nationwide from the government. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.